Hello and welcome to this Denim Group Thread Fix webcast. I'm your host, Non Palmero. During the presentation, all participants will be in listen-only mode, and we ask that you mute your phones. Following the presentation, we will conduct a question and answer session at that time. If you have a question, please use the chat feature on your screen. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded and will be available soon. Today's speaker, Dan Cornell, is globally, rec is globally recognized application security expert. He holds over 15 years of experience architecting, developing, and securing web-based software systems. As Chief Technology Officer and Principal at Denim Group, he leads the technology team to help Fortune 500 companies and government organizations integrate security throughout the development process. I would now like to turn it over to Dan for the presentation. Thanks, Don. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for, uh, for taking the time to join in today. I see some familiar names uh, in, the, in the list of attendees, which is fantastic. Um, so today, what I want to talk about is some of the really interesting use cases that we're seeing from different users of ThreadFix around securing DevOps and specifically doing application security DevOps uh, using ThreadFix, uh, both the existing stuff that we have out. And I also wanted to talk about some of the things that we've improved on or are including in the 2.3 release that is upcoming, uh, specifically targeted at those use cases. My plan was to start with a, a basic ThreadFix demo for folks that might not be familiar with ThreadFix and its different capabilities. Uh, we'll keep that brisk, uh, but I think it's uh, important to run through. Uh, then I want to talk about some of the things that we're seeing folks doing in support of their secure DevOps efforts using ThreadFix, you know, how they're using ThreadFix to manage their app security testing pipeline along with ThreadFix's scan agent and some new notification and alerting features that we've built in ThreadFix so that you can use ThreadFix as a central point to track all of the activities in your application security program and always have a view into the state of the applications that you have deployed. And we'll be looking at some of the automation capabilities that we've built into ThreadFix as well as other components supporting ThreadFix and see how those can be used to support these secure DevOps efforts. Uh, then I want to highlight uh, today two of the contributors that we have that have donated code to the ThreadFix uh, project uh, and product, uh, Pearson Education as well as Samsung's Strategy and Innovation Center. Uh, we've got a number of different contributors uh, and we're thankful for the, you know, all of the work that all of them have done. Um, you know, recently though we've seen a lot of contributions from those two organizations and I want to highlight some of the things that they've done, um, you know, both to thank them as well as to let folks out there know um, the types of new capabilities we're adding this thread fix as well as to open the door if other organizations are interested in helping out. Uh, we love our contributors and uh, we're really excited about some of the stuff that they are contributing um, because we find that it reflects uh, making the life of the everyday thread fix user better. That's really the, uh, you know, the consistent theme that I've seen across the board for these contributions is these are actual thread fix users, power users saying if thread fix did this this way um, that would make my life a lot better and that's really exciting for me um, to make sure that we're serving the needs of those users. Um, so, as Nan said, if you have questions, please uh, you know, use the chat in the Q&A to, uh, to submit them. Uh, we're going to go through here and uh, go through the presentation and open up for questions after that. Uh, so, for folks who may not be as familiar, uh, ThreadFix is a application level or software vulnerability aggregation and management system. It lets you manage the results of the application level testing that you're doing. So that you can load in the results of your static scanning, you can load in the results of your dynamic scanning, uh, load in the results of manual pen testing, manual code review, uh, if you're doing threat modeling, if you're doing component lifecycle management, you can load all of that data into ThreadFix and ThreadFix cleans up that data to present you with a unified set of vulnerabilities that exist in your applications so you can then manage those through the process of remediation. Uh, so ThreadFix, first of all, lets you create a consolidated view of the applications and the vulnerabilities in those applications. And we'll show uh, you know, more specifically what this looks like here in a minute. But again, the idea is across all the different types of testing that you're doing, you can manage your application portfolio and store all of those results. So across different activities, across different vendors that you may be using, all of that can be brought into one central repository so that you can manage vulnerabilities centrally. Uh, you know, in most organizations that we work with, you know, it's not uh, as important whether or not you identified a vulnerability with a static analysis or dynamic analysis. If it reflects an actual vulnerability, you need to fix it. And so this gives you the ability to load all this into one place so that you're not managing multiple PDFs, multiple Excel spreadsheets uh, with different silos of information. Instead, you have one consolidated view. 
the advantage of having this all-in-one consolidated view is it lets you prioritize your application risk decisions based on data. Again, you don't have different silos of data that you're trying to compare. You have one single pane of glass that you're looking into that shows you the security state of the application in your portfolio. And so by having all of this together, you can start to look and see you know, what vulnerabilities are the most prevalent? Which ones do we think expose us to the most risk? Which vulnerabilities have been hanging out there for the longest? And by being able to do that for an individual application as well as across the portfolio, that lets you answer a much more sophisticated set of questions about the state of your application security program so that you can work with management or with other constituents to make determinations of which vulnerabilities do we need to fix first and what do we need to do after that. Next, or finally, you need to translate these vulnerabilities to developers and the tools that they're already using. This is something I've felt very strongly about for a long time, and this is a big differentiator that we've seen between application security programs that start to make headway and the ones that really struggle. If you think about it, going to developers with Pinterest uh, PDFs is not, it's, it's kind of a communication anti-pattern. It's not a great way to interact with the developers to say, hey, I printed out this 300 page PDF, I put sticky notes on the stuff that I thought was really important. That's not how developers work. It's not how they manage their workload. Instead, developers manage their workload inside of defect tracking systems. They do their work inside of IDEs. They get their reporting and metrics from systems like SonarCube. And so to really make headway, what we've found is it's really important for security teams to be able to communicate with the developers and the tools that they're already using. That way the security work that they need to do is not some magic special thing that's different, but that security work instead lives alongside all of the new features that they have to develop. It lives alongside the non-security related bugs that have been introduced to the software. The security work lives alongside the performance tweaks that they need to make. And in that way, security is not something special done occasionally. Instead, that's something that can be rolled into sprints. It can be rolled into scrums on an as needed and as appropriate basis because all of this technical backlog as well as future things that the development team needs to do lives in the same uh, you know, in, in, the, in the same set of tools. That helps to take friction out of the remediation process and really get things moving forward. It's great, finding vulnerabilities is great. Fixing vulnerabilities, however, is really valuable because that's when you've reduced your exposure and the risk to your organization. I wanna go through a very quick, uh, again, a quick demo for folks that are uh, familiar with ThreadFix. When you log into the central ThreadFix server, you see a basic dashboard. And by default, it shows you some vulnerability trending information and highlights the applications with the most and the most serious vulnerabilities. Uh, those widgets are all, uh, you know, there's, if you have different KPIs that you track in your organization, there's an API that you can use to swap those out. Um, so we, you know, the system is very configurable. Uh, but again, by default, it's going to show you some basic trending and highlight some vulnerable, the most uh, vulnerable uh, applications and the ones that have the most serious exposure. Then we go here to the application portfolio. And this lets us see all of the different teams who are developing software in your organization. And that you can be organized based on geography, it can be ba organized based on line of business. Uh, you know, it, it kind of depends on your organization how you want to lay out these different teams. And within each team you can lay out the different applications that each team is responsible for. And so here we see that the e-commerce team is responsible for you know, what is that, uh, five different applications in this case. Uh, you also have the ability to tag applications with additional metadata. Uh, and we'll talk about how that can be used to give you a more flexible structure for your application portfolio. And we'll also see how that can be used to allow you to ask really powerful questions about your application security program uh, a little bit later on. When we drill into a particular application, again, we're going to see some trending information for this application, and we're going to see the highlights of the most common vulnerabilities that are currently open in this particular application. Uh, we also see a list of the currently open vulnerabilities in the system. Um, what ThreadFix lets you do is it lets you load in data from a variety of different sources. And so if you're doing scanning uh, with a desktop-based scanner, you can go and you can you know, manually upload scans. Uh, yeah, that's uh, fun the first couple times, it gets a little old. Uh, a big 
theme for us, and this goes in with the DevOps things that we'll be talking about, is we want to make it really easy to load data into ThreadFix so that you can have activities running in the background that are doing security testing for your applications, loading all of that data up into this one central repository. So ThreadFix exposes a pretty robust REST API, and we've got a command line client that wraps that. And so if you have any sort of scripting or automation that you're doing right now, with the testing of your applications. You can basically just add one line to the end of that scripting that says, grab the results of this testing and load it into ThreadFix. You know, similarly, ThreadFix lets you go out and connect to external systems, uh, what we call remote providers, uh, things like uh, you know, Sonatype, like Veracode, White Hat, uh, Contrast, these uh, server-based systems that have APIs, and ThreadFix then, you map applications from those different systems into applications in ThreadFix, and on a regular basis, ThreadFix goes out, checks to see if there's any new data, and pulls that into the model that ThreadFix is keeping track of for the application. Uh, in addition, as we'll talk about later, we've got a Jenkins plugin if you're doing security testing in your Jenkins continuous integration, uh, you know, as well as what we call our scan agent technology that allows you to drive dynamic scanners uh, to schedule scans or give on-demand scans for dynamic scanners. And we'll look at, again, we'll look at that a little bit more, uh, talking about that specifically in the context of organizations trying to create DevOps security testing pipelines. When you load a new file or set of results into ThreadFix, it first does a diff between this latest set of results and the previous set of results so that it can identify for this particular scanner what new vulnerabilities showed up what old vulnerabilities might have gone away, and did historical vulnerabilities resurface. Then ThreadFix normalizes that data and merges it across other scanners that you might be using, give you, giving you one single view into the set of vulnerabilities currently open in the application. So here we see an example of a cross-site scripting vulnerability, and it was found by AppScan, Arachni, Burp Suite, and WebInspect. And so what we see here is that ThreadFix has automatically deduped these vulnerabilities so that we know that this is one vulnerability we have four pieces of data about, as opposed to being four different vulnerabilities that have to be managed separately. So for organizations that are using multiple scanners to try to get superior test coverage, ThreadFix is potentially a huge time saver because it saves you the trouble of trying to load this data into Excel, trying to line it up manually and figure out like what is our true straight up list of vulnerabilities. Once you've got vulnerabilities loaded into the system, you can start to package them together to ship over to developers. And so what we've done here is we've passed this uh, vulnerability, or passed these seven vulnerabilities and packaged them up to create one defect in this JIRA defect tra tracking system. So this transitions those vulnerabilities from being vulnerabilities that the security team cares about and instead it turns them into software defects that the development teams care about. Uh, in addition, ThreadFix lets you go and slice and dice this data so that you can package it in the way that's going to be most consumable by the development team. You know, the way that we typically see this work is a security analyst sits down either in person or virtually with a representative from the development team, you know, the security lead for the team or the, uh, or, or the application lead for the team, and they negotiate. They figure out like, okay, you know, we've got these seven cross-site scripting, make that into one bug because that's going to make it easy for a developer just to go through and find the seven places where they need to do encoding. All right. Or you may go in and say, <clears throat> You know what, so-and-so worked on the login process, and any time anyone else touches that code, it breaks. Therefore, we're going to package all of these authorization and authentication bugs together, package that up into one defect, and ship that over to the developer that is most familiar with that code. Um, you, know, there's, uh, you can package these in, in, any, in any, any given way that makes sense. We don't have a lot of doctrine around that. But the main thing is to package that up so that the development team is going to be able to make sense of it. ThreadFix then keeps track of the defects that it has created in various bug tracking systems across the enterprise and periodically updates the status. And so here we see that the developer who has assigned this bug thinks that it's been resolved. And so in theory, all of these vulnerabilities that were identified, we should be able to rerun a scan. In this case, Arachni looks like a good choice. We should be able to rerun this Arachni scan, see these vulnerabilities drop off the open list, and if they don't, then the security analyst knows that they need to go and reach out to the developer who is responsible for this bug because the developer thinks that the vulnerabilities have been fixed, but they actually haven't been. 
This allows the security representative to focus in on the exceptional cases where the developer didn't understand how to fix the vulnerability, uh, the developer made a mistake in fixing the vulnerability, <clears throat> and instead of chasing around to each development team with a clipboard with a bunch of printed out pages on it, this information all flows back into ThreadFix so that you can see the current state of security across all the applications in the portfolio. In addition, uh, Adena Group, working along with the folks from uh, the D U.S. Department of Homeland Security Science and Technology Directed, uh, Directorate Cybersecurity Division, uh, we're building a technology um, based on a contract with the uh, DHS S&T um, to create what we call hybrid analysis mapping. And what hybrid analysis mapping does is it allows us to map together or to merge the results of static analysis testing. Uh, or code review tools with dynamic uh, analysis or dy dynamic application security testing. And so here we see an example where we have this vulnerability was identified by two different rules within check marks uh, as well as in a rule with NTO Spider or Rapid7 App Spider. And by loading this data in through the hybrid analysis mapping engine, ThreadFix made the determination these two results from check marks and the result from App Spider are actually reflective of the same vulnerability. <clears throat> so that lets us make a pass over this data so that we can, again, have one single unified list of vulnerabilities, you know, saving time for security analysts because it gives them a picture of you know, really what the security state of the application is. They don't have to go in and manually work with all of this data. So as you do this over time, uh, across the different activities and across the different vendors that you're working with, that gives you a view across your entire portfolio, across all of these activities, gives you one single view into that data. And that lets you then go to report on that data. Um, and by properly tagging applications with the appropriate metadata for situations where you have applications that are subject to certain compliance requirements um, you know, or, or other, you know, the language they're written in, we can start to go in and ask questions where we say, you know, show me all of the vulnerabilities that are currently open for applications that are subject to PCI, that are external facing, and where my testing was done in production. And I only want to focus in on critical and high vulnerabilities because we have a policy that says that we can't let those live for more than 30 days. So this gives me a list of, again, for all applications subject to PCI, external facing, uh, where the testing was done in production, criticals and highs that are over 30 days old. Uh, as I talked about before, by properly tagging applications and by loading all of this data in, it lets you ask a much more sophisticated set of questions about your application vulnerability state uh, than you could if you're trying to manage different silos of data from the different vendors or tools that you have doing testing. You can also save these filters uh, for future years, either via the user interface or via the API. So in a nutshell, that is what ThreadFix lets you do. It lets you consolidate the results of all of this security testing into one central repository to help manage these vulnerabilities through resolution by putting them in the tools that developers are already using. And then it lets you report across all of this different data in order to have a you know, single view into all the activities and the state of all the vulnerabilities that you have. Um, that's uh, great, and that's what we originally developed ThreadFix for. What we've seen now, as organizations start to transition to adopt more DevOps capabilities, and specifically to integrate security into their DevOps, what we're seeing is there are uh, you know, some additional use cases, some additional capabilities that ThreadFix offers uh, coming along with that. <clears throat> And so the real question that we see from different organizations, you know, looking at the, you know, looking as they try to make this transition, they're really pushing for a lot of automation and a lot of knowledge, you know, ongoing as close to real time as possible knowledge of the 
uh, of, the, of the state of their applications. And so the question is, you know, what does your DevOps pipeline look like? Um, I've taken the liberty, and I need to I'll credit these folks in the final slides, um, but these are uh, you know, three different slides from public posts from different organizations that are using ThreadFix in support of their secure DevOps initiatives. The, uh, on the left, the AppSec pipeline is uh, from a presentation from Matt Tesoro from Pearson, uh, looking at how they incorporate the results of a number of different security testing activities consolidate those in ThreadFix and then push them out to developer tools. Uh, in the upper right is a diagram from a post from the folks at the Samsung Strategy and Innovation Center talking about how they increase the, the speed of their security testing program uh, using automation around ThreadFix. Um, and uh, on the bottom right, there is a slide from uh, Chris Curlo at uh, Ally Financial looking at uh, how they incorporate the results of a number of different security testing technologies as well as third-party manual reviews, consolidate those into ThreadFix, and then push those out into different systems. And so really the question here is looking to see what sort of testing are you looking to do or what sort of verification from a security standpoint are you looking to do for applications as you try to increase the speed of your releases. And there's certain things that automation is great at from a security standpoint, and there are other things that automation is simply not really able to help with. And so what we've tried to do with ThreadFix is, for all the tasks that can be automated, allow the results of that automation to be fed up through ThreadFix so that you can use ThreadFix to have that view into the system and to alert you when situations occur that, uh, you know, that may indicate that you're in a state that you shouldn't be. We've got a couple of different capabilities that we support with this, and obviously each organization is going to design their pipeline differently. You know, they're going to have different combinations of software as a service providers doing testing, you know, internal, you know, in-house technology that they're doing dynamic scanning, potentially doing static scanning. You know, maybe they're starting to use I, um, integrated or IaaS type testing. Uh, you may have third parties that are providing. Uh, results from their testing, your manual testing and things like that. And so each organization is going to have a different set of uh, technologies that they are using. And as I mentioned before, we try to make it really easy to get this data consumed into ThreadFix so that it can be added to the model of you know, the identified currently open vulnerabilities, and those vulnerabilities can be worked on to you know, drive out through resolution. So one of the technologies that we've built into ThreadFix is what we call our scan agent. Uh, what we call our scan agent technology, and what the scan agent technology lets you do is it lets you install on the machines where you have currently dynamic scanners, uh, on the machines where you have the desktop-based dynamic scanners, you know, AppScan, WebInspect, Burp Suite, uh, uh, you know, OWASP, Zap, uh, NT Objectives, soon uh, Acunetics, You can go in install our scan agent on those workstations, tell the scan agent what technologies are available. That scan agent then will call home to ThreadFix and say, hey, I'm on a machine where I've got Burp Suite and AppScan. Do you have any jobs for me to run? ThreadFix then maintains an internal scan queue of tasks that it, uh, you know, that it has been asked to run. And so what we see here is we've got the ability to go in and either request an on-demand task where we say, I'd like to add a new task. Let's do a scan with a web inspect, potentially with a configuration file, and add that to the scan queue. <coughs> uh, in addition to manually requesting scans, uh, you can also go in and set a scan policy to say, I'd like to see a daily scan with, uh, you know, with Burt Suite uh, run against this, you know, potentially with the scan configuration. You know, I'd like to see that run. So this lets security teams go in and, uh, you know, set a policy essentially. You know, for, so from the top down, this lets security teams go in and say, this is how often this particular site is going to be scanned with this technology. Again, the scan agent gets the uh, gets the scan job, loads that up, uh, you know, loads loads the configuration into the scanner. The scanner runs, and gets its results. ThreadFix gets those, or the scan agent gets those and feeds those back into ThreadFix. The shift that we've started to see. Uh, you know, and again, we see a progression of people that are using ThreadFix from, again, first manually loading scans in, then moving potentially to using the scan agent to drive scanners in a top-down manner. 
Um, what we also see people doing now uh, is starting to push out that capability to do scanning, to essentially allow development teams or others to self-serve these scans. Uh, as I mentioned before, ThreadFix has a pretty robust REST API and a command line client. And so what that lets, uh, you know, so what that lets you do is essentially go into an environment <coughs> And here we see with a single line, we can say for the ThreadFix CLI, I want to queue a scan for application 31 with Burp Suite. That application then gets scanned. And what we see here is we've got another scan agent task. Uh, and then we can run the scan agent over here. This scan agent has Burp Suite. It got a configuration, uh, you know, started successfully, <clears throat> and it's starting to scan. So it goes out, runs this scan. Uh, you know, does the spider scans, and then ultimately will feed all that result data back up into ThreadFix. And so by using this command line client, or if you wanted to automate it using, uh, you know, some of our, some of our uh, you know, client libraries for the API, this lets you push out to your development teams or to push out to your continuous integration server to say, when I get to a certain point in the build, I want to run this type of scan with this configuration against this application, and I want that data to get automatically loaded up into ThreadFix. And again, we try to make this very easy. Um, we have a number of different uh, ways that you can consume the API. I mentioned before we've got a Java-based command line. Uh, in addition, we've got a Java client library that is essentially the jar for the command line. You can also download that from Maven Central now. Uh, we're, try we're trying to make it really easy to incorporate uh, manipulation of ThreadFix servers into Java applications. Uh, in addition, and this uh, goes to the contributions from the community, uh, Matt Soro uh, from Pearson has written a client library in the Go language, and Adam Parsons has written a client library in the Python library in, in the Python language. And so, in addition to the uh, you know the command line client that you can you know toss into a bash or a bash script, uh, you know we also have those libraries in different languages that you can use to consume this REST API. Not just to schedule scans, also to create applications to check on the status of, uh, of vulnerabilities and so on and so forth. But what we see a lot of use from a DevOps standpoint is using those client libraries of the command line client to drive the REST API. Uh, in addition, uh, another contributor from the community, Brandon Spruce, wrote uh, and, and is working uh, you know, to maintain a Jenkins plugin for ThreadFix. So if you have uh, security testing that you're doing in your Jenkins continuous integration pipeline, you can basically use this plugin to grab the results of that security testing and load it up into ThreadFix so that it gets incorporated in the data. Um, again, trying to make it very easy to let development teams with the tools they're already using and the technologies they're comfortable with, so Jenkins and uh, you know, some lightweight scripting, uh, to self-serve scans or to take the results of scans they're doing and feed that up to the uh, development, or sorry, feed that up to ThreadFix you know, to be consumed by the security teams. Uh, in addition, one of the things that we're releasing in the ThreadFix 2.3. You know, it's great for ThreadFix to be able to consume all that data, but it also needs to be able to alert uh, when the security state of an application is not where you would want it to be. Uh, so, just as we talked before, you know, setting those different policies for uh, setting those different policies for an application. Um, you know, saying, hey, we can't allow any you know, critical vulnerabilities, or we can't allow any SQL injection vulnerabilities, or I don't want to see any criticals or highs over seven days old. You can also use those filters to set an acceptance criteria for ThreadFix. Uh, so you can say, you know, hey, this application, I don't want it to have any SQL injection. Mm -hmm. And so right now, that's, you know, for this application named Merge, that's the policy. And what we see is that's currently failing that policy. Uh, we could go and add additional applications to this, uh, you know, to this uh, policy if we want it. And in addition, for the different applications, we can turn notifications on and off and put notifications in to different emails. And so if I wanted to get a, you know, if I wanted to get that, uh, you know, get an, an email for myself, we could do that uh, as well. And so that lets you not just, you know, we don't offer just a number of different facilities for driving data into ThreadFix. Uh, now ThreadFix can also start to notify other systems when, you know, certain things uh, are not as they should be. And so as part of your pipeline, this lets organizations automate a lot of security testing, 
load all that data into ThreadFix, and then based on the consolidated results at the end of all that testing when the data has been merged, ThreadFix can alert in, on situations where you are out of line with your stated or your goal policy. The net effect is that we're seeing a lot of really interesting interactions between the people are setting up between ThreadFix and outside systems. Um, and that's something that's really very cool. It's, it's very cool for me to see how instead of focusing on the results of one tool or having to deal with each tool individually, you can take a total security picture of the state of an application, throw all that data into ThreadFix, get a consolidated view, and then make decisions based on that consolidated view. And so it lets you set up a much more sophisticated uh, pipeline for the testing of applications so that you can make no go or no-go decisions about application go live. As I also said, uh, there are uh, there's a, there's a number of contributors, um, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll be, there's I've, I've talked about a number of different utilities and facilities. Um, we're going to post the recording of this later this afternoon, as well as the slides, an expanded slide deck. And in addition to that, I'll include links, uh, you know, essentially show notes for everything. I'll have uh, links to all the different things that we're talking about. Um, so uh, that that'll all be available online later this afternoon. Uh, we have a number of contributors, um, and not to, uh, uh, you know, I feel bad not talking through all of them. I will certainly send a link to the page with uh, you know, our contributor page. Uh, but today I wanted to focus specifically on the two contributors that have really, you know, in the, in the uh, intervening time between the 2.2 and the 2.3 release of ThreadFix, really done a lot of stuff. Uh, the Pearson folks, um, you know, have a number of, you know, as, as I mentioned before, uh, their folks have written uh, client libraries in both Go and Python, which is fantastic. Uh, Matt Tesoro has also written some automation that helps to make it easier to load in the results of check marks scanning uh, into, uh, in, into ThreadFix. Uh, which is which is fantastic. We're seeing a lot of check marks users uh, overlap with ThreadFix as well these days, um, and the uh, you know and, and they've also uh, you know basically sponsored the development of a number of features that helped them to accelerate their deployment of ThreadFix in their environment. And the interesting thing that I've noticed about a lot of these contributions, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, we brief uh, the different analyst firms, you know, Gartner, Forrester, you know, for the major releases of ThreadFix, and there are features that the analyst folks care about, about ThreadFix. Uh, you know, a good example of that is the hybrid analysis mapping stuff that we're doing on that contract with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Uh, that's kind of the big, exciting, industry-changing stuff uh, that I think is very cool. What I really enjoy about the contributions from the, uh, you know, you know, from, from these different uh, contributing organizations is they're the ones that make the everyday life of ThreadFix users um, better, right? Because they're addressing the usability issues, the, you know, the user experience issues that uh, inevitably uh, you know, crop into products. And, and that's really exciting for me because what it means is we can make it easier for security analysts to do their job. Um, and so if we look at the, uh, you know, the stuff that Pearson has, uh, has, has helped sponsor and contribute, um, you know, uh, you know, making it easier to administer multiple defect tracker credentials uh, across a multitude of different applications. Uh, you know, you know, adding the capability to deep link after authentication so that you can put links to ThreadFix pages in other repositories and people can be able to log in and land there. A number of extensions to our REST API. Uh, you know, pulling scan details, getting lists of scans, um, you know, finding unmapped uh, or being able to list unmapped findings via the REST API. Uh, you know, being able to manipulate the application tags uh, and, uh, you know, making updates to other things. So really just, uh, you know, extending the API to allow for the types of automation that people want to do. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, you know, in addition, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, that I think is going to be really impactful for organizations that have really, really large applications, um, the ability to combine multiple scan files. And so if you have an application that's so big, you run three different app scan scans against it, or three different Fortify scans against it, the ability to load those three files simultaneously into ThreadFix, to have ThreadFix use its combination technology to make one set of results from those three you know, or two or you know, arbitrary number of files 
files and to load that set of results in for the merging and analysis. Um, you know, I think for, uh, you know, for, for folks that are dealing with really large applications or that have to break up scans in that way for performance or other reasons, um, that's going to be a really helpful, uh, you know, really helpful uh, you know, technology. You know, they also helped to support uh, adding support for AppScan Enterprise as a remote provider. We've supported AppScan Enterprise for a long time with individual file uploads. Um, they actually um, you know, uh, contributed the support to have AppScan Enterprise turned into a remote provider, um, which, is, which is great because being able to pull data from network services rather than manipulating individual files makes it a lot easier to set things up and, and, and have them in motion and go from there. Um, and it makes it a lot easier, again, so that security analysts only have to manage the exceptional cases. You know, hey, I've got a new application, I've got an application that moved, as opposed to having to run each scan and deal with those files individually. Uh, the Samsung folks also added some really cool stuff. Um, they made it a lot easier to submit defects more quickly because you can go through now and set up your default templates for the defects that you want to create, default settings. Um, they also added the capability to template the text in the defects that you create using the velocity templating engine. Um, that's something that I think is going to be uh, is going to be really good because what we've found is a lot of variability in the amount of data that organizations want to put into bugs. Some are concerned about putting too much data into bugs, uh, about security vulnerabilities, because they don't, uh, you know, if those systems are compromised, they don't want the vulnerability data in there, um, you know, and, and they want the developers to instead maybe log into ThreadFix to get that data. You know, other organizations want to put excruciating detail into the uh, you know, into the defects, and so this allows you to customize in your ThreadFix installation exactly what you want that defect text to look like, um, which, is, uh, which is which is great. And that goes very much along our theme with how do we take friction out of the process? How do we present this information to the developers in the way that's going to be the the most useful? Uh, you know, and again, if you from from an analyst standpoint, that's not necessarily something that is going to get them very excited. But it gets me very excited because what it means is that we can continue to push to break down those barriers between security teams and development teams by providing the best user experience possible, both for the security analysts creating these defects as well as for the developers on the other end consuming them. Uh, the Samsung folks also contributed to the beginning of the email alerting system that, uh, you know, that, that can send either regular alerts or these targeted alerts that happen when policy changes occur. <clears throat> um, so, uh, again, thank you to, you know, to, both, uh, you know, to both Pearson and the folks at Samsung. Uh, thank you to all of our contributors. Uh, and again, I'll have a link. You know, free, please feel free to check out that page if you check the show notes. Uh, and for organizations that might also want to contribute, you know, we, we think that's great. Uh, that's been one of the really cool things about the development model that we've had for ThreadFix with the combined community edition and the enterprise edition. It creates situations where it is uh, easy for us or easier for us to accept those types of contributions um, and really make the product better for all the users um, by everyone contributing. Uh, fantastic. You know, if, if, if you're interested in contributing, again, we think that's fantastic. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. You know, reach out. You can reach out to me individually, uh, dan at denimgroup.com, uh, or email support at threadfix.org. Uh, and you know, based on that, it makes sense to have a conversation to see what kind of changes do you want to make. Are those changes that are maybe specific really to your environment, or are they something that we think we can, uh, that, you know, can be put together in a way that it makes sense to include in the mainline code? Uh, it's good to have that discussion just before a lot of effort goes into things. We may be able to tell you about things that are on the roadmap that would save you trouble. Uh, you know, again, you, uh, you probably have ideas that we haven't thought of, uh, and so it's great to have that conversation. Uh, for us to accept code contributions, we do need a contributor agreement. Um, it's very similar to the MySQL model. This lets us maintain both the community edition and the enterprise edition. And it essentially says, you know, we can we'll release the, uh, the code that you contributed in the community edition, but we also can repackage it in things such as the enterprise edition. It's very similar to the MySQL model. Candidly, we took the MySQL agreement and replaced MySQL with Denim Group. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's something that certainly uh, is, is worth discussing uh, just because that is a requirement just of, uh, of the way that our model works. Uh, and then, again, uh, we'd love to get more people up on the contributor page. That's been a really cool thing um, about building ThreadFix out and building, uh, you know, and, and seeing the ThreadFix community develop is being able to have access to those ideas. Uh, really, really fantastic stuff. Um, so uh, that is uh, really what I wanted to cover 
And if folks have questions, please feel free to send them to the Q&A. Okay. Uh, okay, so I got a question about uh, when are the well, when are the new capabilities, uh, you know, you know, specifically in this place for you know from the Pearson folks going to be available? Uh, you know, there, uh, people are looking for those. Uh, yeah, those are uh, we're going to be releasing some builds. Uh, the target release for Thread Six 2.3 is in September, but we're going to start releasing some builds leading up to that that incorporate all of that technology. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so those, those should hopefully be coming here. I, I, I wanted the engineers to have one ready for uh, at, at the current time, but we're, you know, currently cleaning some stuff up and rearranging some things in the user interface. So I, uh, so we, we didn't have a build for today, but those should be coming here in the next couple of weeks for folks to start to get access to. Excellent. Other questions? Okay, got a question here about what are the options for correlating the results from different scan engines? Um, I am not, uh, I'm not entirely sure what you mean. Uh, so the type of correlation that occurs, um, you, we correlate dynamic to dynamic by matching the CWE, the relative URL within the application, and optionally the injection point. Um, we uh, merge static to static by, again, matching the CWE as well as the code flow or the data flow through the application. And then we do, with our hybrid analysis mapping technology, we do the uh, static to dynamic matching by looking, by building an attack surface model of the application that keeps track of the entry point source code line responsible for each, uh, you know, for, for each uh, piece of attack surface. Uh, and then based on that, we can match and say, oh, well, this SQL injection at, uh, you know, login.jsp for the username parameter matches, on, on the dynamic result, matches this, uh, you know, com.whatever.whatever.logincontroller.java for a Java Spring application at this line of code from the static result, we're going to merge those together. Uh, we don't current, we do currently do some and we'll be improving our support for uh, merging IAS results. Right now we specifically support contrast on the IAS side and we do dynamic to IAS matching. Uh, we're going to be improving that to, uh, to also incorporate the static components of the results that you get out of IAS. Um, right now, we don't do merging between our component lifecycle management, you know, the results that we get from, uh, from the Sonotype Nexus or dependency check into other results that we've identified. That's something from a science project standpoint um, uh, you know, that, that, that is interesting, but uh, it's not something that we've, uh, that, that we've built out yet. Uh, excellent. Uh, so we got a, a question about some of the uh, about some of the results with White Hat. Um, yeah, we're we're uh, we've got an ongoing like a challenge with these systems. Well, one of the challenges that we have with uh, with ThreadFix in general is we connect out to probably 30 or 40 different technologies, uh, and all those folks. Um, uh, you know, all, all those folks don't necessarily consult us when they make changes to their file formats, and they don't necessarily consult us when they, uh, uh, when they, uh, uh, you know, if they change the results from their APIs. Um, and, and so that's a, a little bit of a, uh, of a some catch up that we've got to do. Um, you know, but we have built ThreadFix in a way such that we can replace the importer components independent of a version upgrade. Uh, that's a separate jar file that gets built and can be, uh, so we can usually turn changes to that around pretty quickly. Uh, and in the future, we're looking at trying to move to more of like a live update type of, uh, you know, a live update type, uh, type of model um, where those, you know, we can collect data from you know, certain installs to identify when we have unmapped findings or things like that, uh, roll that data up, uh, make the appropriate updates to our mappings, and then push those out to the, uh, you know, the thread fix users that are interested in consuming that stuff. Uh, okay, so a question about the thread fix provide an interface for identifying false positives, uh, or is it assume that is covered in the scanning tool? We assume that that is covered in the scanning tool. Uh, and so, uh, you know, but, for most technologies, and we're trying to, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, wh where the technology supports that we're trying to respect this uh, as well. <clears throat> um, we also want to bring in the, like, if you've made an audit decision, for example, if you're auditing a Fortify FPR and you've gone in and, uh, 
uh, you know, you've gone in and uh, you know, marked up the Fortify FPR with the false positives, things that aren't, uh, you know, things that aren't actually a vulnerability. We try to respect that decision as well as comments or metadata that you've attached when we pull that in. And so, you know, especially if you look at ThreadFix having a web-based interface, the you know, ability to go in and do that type of triage is a little bit easier in like an audit workbench type of like on your desktop type of uh, situation. Um, and so ThreadFix doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't necessarily have false positive, you know, you know again, ThreadFix trusts the tool, but inside of ThreadFix, uh, you know, one level of cleaning that we do with our applications that are being run through the, uh, uh, that are being run through the hybrid analysis mapping is because we have an understanding of the language and the framework, we can often go in and consolidate the results from other scanners. And so what we see in a lot of cases is you have, um, you know, applications that have like a RESTful style of URL creation will over-report certain vulnerabilities. We can consolidate that stuff down. You know, in addition, you have the ability in ThreadFix to go in and mark vulnerabilities as false positives. So we can go in here and if we, uh, you know, let's say that we think that this information exposure is a false positive, uh, you know, we can go mark that as a false positive. <clears throat> That's going to drop off the list of the open vulnerabilities that we're looking at, and that decision is durable over time. And so the next time I upload the, uh, what was that, a, uh, a burp scan or uh, you know, the acunetic scan, you know, the next time I upload that acunetic scan, presumably if the application state hasn't changed, uh, you know, acunetic is still going to report that vulnerability that we identified as a false positive. Um, but ThreadFix is going to keep that out of view. So uh, while ThreadFix you know, doesn't really have a perspective to identify false positives, it can help in certain situations to clean up some of the data so that you have a better set of results. Um, it can respect the decisions that you've made somewhere uh, you know, in, in, in other tools and bring those in. And once you make a false positive decision, that decision is durable over time. If you want to go you know, with these uh, filters, we can go in and say, well, I want to look at the, you know, only show me the uh, you know, only show me the false positives, uh, you can always go back if you want to audit those, you know, pull those back up, but from an analyst standpoint, you only have to deal with that, uh, you only have to deal with that once. Uh, okay, so we've got a question about is the data consolidated in thread fix? Um, okay, yeah, and so the so the question is, does ThreadFix consolidate all the data into, a, uh, into, one, into its own format, and is it possible to retrieve the previous, um, the, the, the previous uh, data? Um, ThreadFix does have its own internal data format. Uh, it maps pretty closely to the OWASP SSVL that we helped, uh, we, that we helped to create based on that. Um, we do maintain some of the, uh, you know, some of the application metadata uh, so if we want to go in here and look at this cross-site scripting, we can see, for example, the attack request and the attack response um, that, uh, that, that was uh, contained in there. So we do pull some of the metadata. <clears throat> um, we also, for certain types of, uh, for, for certain scanners, we maintain their raw finding or the XML chunk that was responsible for that whole thing. I don't believe that is accessible via the, uh, um, you know, via the API right now, but that's, a, that's an excellent question. Uh, in addition, we have, um, and I don't believe I have that turned on in my example here, uh, we save, you have the ability to turn on archiving of scan files and that will cause ThreadFix to save the original scan file that, it, that you originally uploaded. Again, this is, uh, this is optional. Uh, so in that case, you could go and re-download the scan file if you wanted to look at the original scan or needed to manipulate that. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Um, okay, so a uh, question about the ThreadFix Enterprise. There's LDAP integration. Um, the, uh, yeah, so ThreadFix Enterprise, uh, ThreadFix community really targeted toward single users um, or single user environments because there are no data or uh, you know, there's no control between accounts. Everybody can do and see everything because they're all administrators. Um, for ThreadFix Enterprise, we do have uh, LDAP for authentication and you also have the ability to set in, uh, to set up different groups and permissions both for data-based access control and role-based access control. Uh, the question is do we currently have uh, SAML 2.0 or something like that? Uh, we don't have support for SAML right now, but that is something that we have uh, talked about um, and so that is something that we are, we are looking both at the way that we handle uh, you know, possibly the ability to pull 
group data or to, to pull authorization from Active Directory based on group membership as well as adding support for something like SAML so that you can uh, even more seamlessly integrate ThreadFix into your enterprise authentication and uh, you know, authorization architecture. Excellent. Do we have, have any other questions? These are great questions. This is good stuff. Oh, wait, here we go. Uh, okay, so the question is, is the ThreadFix able to integrate results from dynamic scanners that are, that are non-supported and furthermore manual testing results? Okay, great question. So we have, and I will add this to the, uh, to, to the, uh, to the, to the notes from this. Um, if we go to GitHub, we have a guide for adding support for, uh, wait a minute. Uh, we have a guide out there as well as some sample code for creating support for new scanners that we don't already support. Uh, in addition, we have a guide, a similar guide for creating uh, remote providers. And so if you have, if there is um, a, uh, if, if there's a technology that is not currently supported that you would like to see supported, uh, again, you can ask us about that. You can write it yourself. Uh, some vendors, a, a great example, the Virtual Forge folks who make an SAP ABOP, uh, static analysis tool. They actually wrote support for their uh, testing tool and contributed, you know, based on our, you know, the API docs provided here and contributed that to the project. So that was a, a really cool opportunity to work with that vendor in that way. If you have scanning tools in your environment that are, you know, in, in certain large environments, we see that people have created their own tools. Um, you know, guides like this are available uh, and you can create that. Basically drop a jar file in your ThreadFix directory, you know, uh, re-up the, you know, up the server and that will then get loaded into the capabilities that are there. Um, oh, in, in addition, there's a question about manual testing results. Yeah, uh, ThreadFix also lets you track manual testing results. Um, you, know, you can go, you can enter them one by one. So we can go here and say, I want to add a manual finding. You know, we've got a, an improper authorization issue in you know, stuff.jsp for the you know, queue parameter. I consider this to be high and then I've got my description here. So you can submit findings manually. In addition, that SSVL vulnerability format that I talked about before, uh, it's a very simple XML format, you can upload those documents. And we've also got a utility, uh, I'll include this in the show notes as well, we've got a utility that will take Excel spreadsheets or CSV files and given some explanation of what the different columns mean, it will translate those into um, SSVL documents that you can upload. And so, uh, again, with the manual findings, you can either uh, you know, put, put them in one by one, which is appropriate in certain situations, uh, or you can, uh, you know, we've got a file format as well as some conversion utilities that you can use uh, surrounding that. And that's something, uh, you know, we, we know in, in, in a number of environments, folks, uh, you know, running thread fix receive, like, Excel spreadsheets from the third-party pen test teams. Uh, so we've created some utilities that let you turn that structured data in Excel into structured data that ThreadFix is going to understand so that you can, uh, so that you can upload that. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, so I've got a question here about tags at the level of an application as well as tags for individual vulnerabilities. You can do both of those. Um, so you can tag applications. Uh, common uses for that are to say this application is, sub you know, again, the example I had before, this application is subject to PCI, right, or this, one, this application is written in Java, or this application was developed in-house versus by, uh, you know, an, another, uh, you know, by a third-party team. Uh, in addition, you can go in and tag uh, individual vulnerabilities as well. And so that may mean, you know, different things where you want to tag it and say, you know, we've got two different uh, penetration testing teams. You know, this was found by team one versus found by team two. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, you can, you can tag, uh, again, vulnerabilities with, uh, with that type of metadata so that you can quickly go and search and pull those up as well. Um, so let me see, uh, let me pull an example here of. Um, so if we go down and look at these vulnerability tags, you know, if you want to, if you want to, you know, tag individual assessments, you can say, you know, hey, I've got an assessment that, uh, you know, I, I did this assessment on, uh, you know, December 15th of 2015. Um, you can tag all the vulnerabilities identified by an assessment like that so that you can, you know, you know differentiate between them. Uh, so we try to give you the ability, uh, you can also mark up vulnerabilities with comments and you can also tag those comments. And so if you have a, an application subject to PCI, 
and you have a compensating control for a vulnerability that you're not going to fix, you can tag the comment that says, hey, we think this is covered by the web application firewall. And ThreadFix actually, or ThreadFix Enterprise actually has some reports that you can run based on that so that you can show, uh, you know, so you can say, for all my applications subject to PCI, um, you know, here was the security state at the beginning time, here's the security state at the end time, here's all of our open vulnerabilities, but for certain vulnerabilities, I've gone in and marked those up with our compensating controls. And so this is the type of report when the auditor comes around, you can say, for all my applications subject to PCI, here's all the open vulnerabilities with comments tagged PCI for each of those that show what our compensated controls are. And again, the hope is that, the, uh, uh, that when the auditor comes around and you can generate a report like that very quickly, that they're going to go and bother the firewall logs people, hoping that they're going to be you know, more fruitful uh, uh, you know, for, uh, for, for you know, policy violations. Uh, I got a question about visual analytics to let you track and or compare the performance of diff different development teams over time. We don't yet have that, um, but that is that is something that I am interested in. Um, you know, being able to better compare applications uh, you know, over time. One of the things that we're adding that, uh, that that's not. It's not about that comparison over time, but that may help you to do some analysis like that is we're adding the ability to mark applications at a given point in time. So you can mark an application and say, this was our 2.0 release and we know where we were. Um, or potentially you might mark an application and say, here's where we train the development team. You know, here's where we send everybody to a two-day class on secure coding. The hope is that what we see is after that, our vulnerabilities trend down. Um, we've talked about a number of potential reports that we can do um, comparing one team to another or one application to another. Um, we just, uh, you know, if you have some thoughts on that or if you've got some mock-ups that you could send us, that would be fantastic. Uh, we've gone around and around with that and we just haven't come up with a um, with, with a format that we really like, but uh, that is something that we're looking at as well. Um, let's see. Um, talk about threat modeling. Yeah. So in the future, uh, I'm hoping we're hoping to add more direct support for threat modeling. You know, specifically like the Microsoft uh, threat analysis modeling tool, as well as some of the other uh, you know, other commercial tools that are out there. Um, right now, the way that most teams keep track of their threat modeling results is by going in and creating a manual vulnerability based on that, transitioning that to a um, you know, over to a defect in the development team's world and then waiting to see if the development team actually resolves that defect. And so it's, it's a, you know, to most of the people tracking threat modeling right now, you've got to, you've kind of got to like go through some hoops or misuse a couple of the capabilities. Um, but again, by having the ability to add manual findings, you can go in and say, I'm concerned about, you know, authorization issues with the login. Uh, here's my recommendations on, on what you need to do to mitigate this threat. And that data can be tracked in the system alongside of the other stuff. So it's, um, the tracking for that is not perfect right now. It's, it's possible, uh, and that's one of the things that we've looked at doing in the future is, um, uh, is uh, you know, adding better native support for, uh, for threat modeling. Uh, okay, let's see. We have any other questions? I think we're coming up on just about an hour. I'll stay here. Uh, I'll stay here as long as there's people, uh, you know, logged into the uh, uh, logged into the system. All right, excellent. Well, good. Well, I wanted to thank uh, all of you all for attending. Uh, I wanted to thank, especially again, the uh, the great folks at Pearson, the great folks at Samsung who helped to contribute. Um, we really, really appreciate uh, the you know the everybody in the ThreadFix community that provides us with. Uh, with uh, thread fix. Um, oh, and my my, uh, my my favorite question is uh, now the question is: Do we offer a, consult a consultation to firms looking to introduce thread fix? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, uh, Denver Group loves to provide services around thread fix. Um, I mean, that's uh, that's that's really you know. Uh, you know, a, a great way that we get to interact with people, and that I think is helpful for a lot of folks that are deploying ThreadFix. You know, ThreadFix is a platform with a lot of different capabilities from the standpoint of it can, you can like push data into it, you can pull data out of it, you can you know, use a various set of plugins, and because it's a little bit of a sprawling ecosystem of different tools and capabilities, um, I, I, I think there's a lot of value uh, in, in working with some of our folks who are experienced with ThreadFix who know the different capabilities, and um, 
and can and can help make sure that like if you're deploying thread fix that it's you know your tagging scheme is set up you know you know where you're pushing data you know you're pulling data you know you can run the reports that you need um, you know we've got folks that are they're experts that have seen a number of different deployments um, and uh, yeah no one would love to help you more with your thread fix deployment than the good people at Denver so uh, yeah please please feel free to reach out we'd love to talk to you more. Um, okay, let's see. Well, question keep coming. Would you offering deep linking uh, to obtain more info about a vulnerability? Um, so, uh, from a deep linking standpoint, you should now, um, and, and I'm, I'm not sure which version this is. I need to track that down. But you should be able now, if you wanted to link to a specific vulnerability, or we wanted to go in here to this uh, across that scripting vulnerability here. Uh, you should be able to, uh, you know, to, to like send this link, and although it has the anti c surf nonce, uh, that shouldn't be required. Yeah, so we can render that page without it. So we, if you wanted to, uh, you know, if you wanted to put deep links to ThreadFix in other systems, um, you know, that's uh, that should be supported. We, uh, you know, we've got a c surf filter that has exceptions for certain URLs, and most of the uh, most of the most of the ones that are just displaying information about the vulnerabilities or an application or a team, those should have the C surf protection turned off. If you're running into problem with, the problems with that, let us know. I mean, there's a, a lot of, you know, we uh, we've, we've made a couple passes over this to identify the situations where we need the C surf protection and where we don't. Um, one other thing that may be of uh, of, of interest to folks, um, you know, where uh, you know if you're managing results in like a check marks or a white hat. Um, we do. Uh, let's see. Um, we do from inside of ThreadFix keep track of the URLs for um, you know, where you can go in and um, you know, and, and we've got links directly into um, yeah, you know, into your checkmark server or your white hat server. And so, just like we allow you to deep link into ThreadFix if you need to store links to ThreadFix, like in a, in a defect tracking system, if you want the developers to give them an account and to let them, you know, drill in and see all the data, uh, you can do that. Similarly, we have the, you know, for, for certain technologies, we allow you to link out to those technologies uh, as, as well. What, what else do we have? Uh, any, any other questions? Excellent. Well, for uh, for again, thank you to everybody coming out. Uh, if anybody's going to be at Black Hat next week, um, ThreadFix community will be featured for I think the fourth year running in the Black Hat arsenal. Um, so I will be roaming around Las Vegas uh, Wednesday through Friday, I believe, and ThreadFix will be presenting. You know, our our time with the table in the Black Hat arsenal will be uh, three thirty to. Six uh, on Thursday, uh, so 3:30 to 6 on Thursday. If you're at Black Hat, come by the Black Hat Arsenal. Love to meet you in person and talk to you. And um, if you've uh, if you've got any other questions, uh, again, uh, just shoot an uh, shoot an email to me, Dan at denimgroup.com, and we'll work to get the slides and the links to all the different resources we've talked about online today. And again, thank you, thanks to all the contributors, uh, and thanks to everybody for uh, spending some time uh, with us today. Thank you for attending this live Denim Group webcast. You may now disconnect. Bye-bye.